What's up guys, welcome back to Ubad's lab and today I'm going to be balancing the world's hardest chemical equation. Alright, so this was the hardest chemical equation that I was able to find that uh, didn't have subscripts that are ridiculous like over a thousand because then you just have to use a calculator and then it's not fun. So uh, for this one, we're going to be using a systems of equations to find what the coefficients are in front of each compound. So first, we're going to start off by um, making a variable for uh, each coefficient to keep it simple. So we're going to do an alphabetical order. So A, B, C, D, E, and F. And our goal is to find what all of these variables equal, and then we'll be done. So the first um, basic thing of balancing chemical equations is that you can't gain or lose an element from one side to another. So let's use that to our advantage. So let's start with Cu, for example. On this side, we're going to have 2 times whatever A is going to be of Cu. So we have 2A, and then the Cu never shows up again on this side. And then set it equal to the other side. So Cu shows up over here and over here. And there's no subscript, so just going to be whatever C is, that's how many Cu's we're going to have, and that's plus whatever D is, that's how many Cu's we're going to have as well on this side. So we already got our first equation set up, and we're going to do one for each element. So let's start with S now. So on this side, we just have one S, and then it's going to be that coefficient of A, and no subscript, so it's just going to be A is equal to then S on this side has no subscript, and then the coefficient is D, so just going to be D times S, that's how many S's we're going to have, so just A is equal to D. So we already know that these two coefficients are going to be equal, and that can be very useful. And let's, uh, let's go to H now. So um, for H, no subscript, and it only shows up once, and uh, the coefficient is b, so b is equal to, and let's look at the other side. So h only shows up once in the H2O, and it's a subscript 2, and it, it multiplied by the coefficient of f, so it's going to be 2 times f. Okay, and let's go to n now. So for n, we have, uh, over here it's simple, we just have uh, b because no subscript and it shows up once and over here we have a subscript so it's going to be 2 times the, the coefficient of C so it's equal to 2 C and then plus because it comes up again over here uh, to oh wait no that 2 is for the oxygen okay so it's just going to be plus E okay and now let's go to oxygen this is going to be the the hardest one because it shows up a bunch and um, so let's check oxygen over here we have 3 and the coefficient of B so um, 3 B is equal to so as you can see oxygen basically shows up in every compound here so uh, it's gonna be a little complicated so we have 2 times the subscript of 3, so 6, and then you multiply that by the coefficient of c, so it's going to be 6c plus, for this one, it's 4 times the coefficient of uh, d, so 4d, and then plus 2e, and then over here it's going to be uh, just f. Okay, we got our uh, equation set up, and now it should be a bit easier now because we have all of our stuff organized. So what, you're, what you should do is start an experiment by setting um, one of your variables uh, to 1. So let's just start um, with A for example. 
So let's say uh, a is equal to one. Okay, and then now we look if we can use that information to find any of the other variables. So let's look through here, and we can see that if we look at this equation for s, a is equal to d. So we can easily just find out that d is now equal to one. And now if we have a and d, can we use those two to find one more variable? So uh, we can't use this one, obviously. We already used this and see uh, no other variables are in this one. And then for this one, a and d aren't in it, a and d aren't in it. And then this one has too many other variables to help us. So if we look at this one, there's a, d, and then one more variable, c, which we can easily solve for. So let's plug in a and d to this into this equation. So 2 times 1 is equal to c plus 1. So we find out that c is just 1 as well, because uh, 2 minus 1. So we have a, d, and c. We had a pretty fast start, but those were the easy ones. Um, now it's going to get a little harder because we're actually going to have to uh, set up a system of, of equations now. So um, uh, now let's look if we can use these three variables to find any other variables. And we'll find that it won't be as easy. So obviously, first equation, a, c, and d, these are three that we know. It's not useful. a and d, we already know these two, not useful. Uh, and now we have uh, b is equal to 2f. Uh, we can't use this either, two um, variables that we don't have. Now if we look at this one, this is where it gets interesting. We have b is equal to uh, 2c plus e. But we could plug in the, um, the 1 into the c, and then we'll get b is equal to 2 plus e. And if we get another equation that has the uh, only two variables b and e in it, then we can use the systems of equations to uh, solve for both of those variables. So first, let's, um, let's simplify this. So we have b is equal to 2c, and we know c is equal to uh, 1. So it just is going to be uh, 2 plus e. So we know b is equal to 2 plus e. So we have to get another um, equation that um, only has b and e in it. So we can do that by looking at these two equations right here and trying to uh, cancel out the, um, the, the f's from it. Because that's, that's the only other thing that we need to cancel out. Because we know c and d, that's just gonna be, those are just going to become constants because we can plug in 1 into them. And um, e and b are the ones we're looking for. We want to keep those. And f is the only one we want to cancel. OK. So uh, how would we cancel that? We're going to have to, if we multiply this entire equation by 2, then we'll have 2f and 2f. Then we can subtract this equation from this equation, and we'll get rid of f. So let's do that real quick. Let's multiply this entire equation by 2. All right, so we get um, 6b is equal to uh, 12c plus 8d plus uh, 4e plus 2f. OK, so we multiplied this one by 2. And now let's just um, bring, what was the other equation? Uh, this one, that, that's what we're using. So we get uh, b is equal to 2f. And let's just like subtract by this equation. And what we get is 6b minus b, we get 5b is equal to uh, 12c plus 8d plus 4e and then the two f's cancel out. And that's what we get. And now we have c and d, so let's plug in one into those. It'll just be 12 plus eight, so we'll have five b is equal to four e plus 20. So then it's 12 plus eight is 20. And uh, now we have these two equations that just have the variables b and e in it. So we can use uh, systems of equations to, um, we can uh, substitute and figure out what the variables are. So we know b is equal to 2 plus e. 
So if we know b is equal to 2 plus e, we can sub in 2 plus e in for where, where we see b. And, there, and therefore, we can have just one uh, variable, and then it'll be easier to solve. So let's put 2 plus e in for b. the 4e plus 20 okay and then 5 times uh, 2 we just get 10 plus 5e is equal to 4e plus 20 and then we can just subtract uh, 4e on this side so minus 4e minus 4e and then it's minus 10 and it's minus I mean minus 10 and we'll have e is equal to 10 okay now that we have E, it's going to be super easy to just quickly get B because we have this easy equation right here. So we, have, we know B is equal to 2 plus uh, E, and E is now 10. So we know B is equal to 12. Okay, I believe there's just one more variable that we're missing, which is F. And this is the simplest way to get it. We know that B is equal to 2F, so let's put... Uh, B, which is 12, 12 is equal to 2, F divided by 2, divided by 2, F is equal to 6. And there, there we have it. We solved uh, all the variables in this pretty complicated chemical equation right here, and we didn't have to use a calculator in the process. Thanks for watching, guys. We're almost at 200 subscribers, so don't forget to subscribe and help me get there. Uh, also, if you leave a comment on this video, I'll definitely respond to it, so uh, feel free to do that. And stay tuned for my next video, where I'm going to be making copper acetate and hopefully getting some crystals from it.